Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chapter 4 of the horrific show, Killer Cuts. I am Bobby Munson, joined by my co-host, Astrid Pizarro, and our very special guest joining us through call here, Mitch Clark. Thank you for coming in. I uh, really appreciate you joining the show here today. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. You know, it's uh, pretty cool. I always love being on uh, horror movie podcasts and... <laughs> pro wrestling podcast i think you guys do the best of both yeah we uh we're trying to deliver both of those things and uh we wanted to bring you on here i know i've uh you and i have known each other for a little bit now uh over in prairie pro wrestling but got the opportunity to see the druids hand i've watched it a couple times now astrid is just recently watched as well too and now that it's available to the world through youtube uh, we will put the link up here in the video for everybody to go and check that out. We wanted to talk to you. Uh, you are in this movie starring in it as a character named Cole. I'll give the quick synopsis for everybody. It's an ostracized town priest and his uh, acolyte uh, face the ramifications of their dark past. Uh, directed by Mitch Oliver, written by Mitch Oliver and Jesse Sawatsky, Sawitsky, I believe is the pronunciation. And the other uh, stars in this film with you, Mitch, uh, tell me if I get this wrong, uh, Hugh Evans. And Gabriel uh, Bucols, is Buckles, that yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. Um, this was a uh, this was filmed in Saskatchewan. Uh, it, the Kickstarter was done for this, I believe, thirty hours to get the funding to put this together. Um, how, for my first question for you is, uh, how were you approached? How did you get involved with this project, Mitch? Uh, for me, I I'd known uh, Mitch Oliver from the Terror Table podcast. They came to a PPW show. And uh, uh, Jeff Drake from PPW was like, hey, I got some buddies. They, they love horror movies, blah, blah, blah. Would you be interested in being on their show? And uh, I, I think that was a match I had against Cheetah Bear, Jude Dawkins. And like right after the show, we did a breakdown of Hellraiser. It was super cool. And uh, a friendship between myself and Mitch Oliver and, and Boozy, also from uh, Terror Table, kind of was formed. And uh, Mitch Oliver and I were talking all the time I've been on a couple episodes way more than I probably should be due to my lack of horror knowledge. But, um, and he was talking about how he was going to chase his dream of working in movies and all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, man, you, you know, you got to say yes to yourself sometimes. And it's like, I want to do a movie. I'm like, well, like, uh, due to my like awesome selling ability, I was like, Hey, I don't know if you, you know, this, like I took university drama classes. I did dinner theater, all these other things before, you know, decided to get punched in the face for a living for over a decade. <laughs> and he took me up on that offer. And it's, it's just like a, a really awesome display of the sense of community in Saskatchewan where everyone came together to like have this super cool product that we we ended up with it, it, it's nuts how well it's done it's crazy how good it looks you know um i tell people that i was about to be in you know like an indie film and they're like they're expecting something that's shot on you know grandpa's old like handheld camera and like mm -hmm. the editing and the music and everything involved in it was just uh, far surpassed by expectations of what it is what it became yeah, it's quite remarkable. In fact, uh, everybody that I have shown it to is uh, quite quite impressed as well, too. And I, I noticed, like, not to, not just yourself, but, of course, Jeff Drake, who I'm also familiar with there. And also, uh, I, I'm going to... Uh, Dylan Harisiak, I think, was another name that came up in the film that uh, somebody I know is, I think, would have been on the musical side, possibly, or music supervisor there for you guys, uh, has been involved in music here in the Saskatchewan area for quite some time. Uh, this came together beautifully. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Uh, my only gripe is I wanted more. I, 13 minutes didn't seem mm -hmm. quite enough of a running time. I think I want to know more about the Druid's Hand and see this at a full length. Um, 
Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, but I'm gonna pass this over to Astrid. I know she's got some amazing questions here to ask you, Mitch. Uh, we're gonna go over to to Astrid for a bit. <laughs> Um, I was just curious more than anything, like, is this the first time you do something like this kind of role like this? And if it was your first time, how did you get very ready, like, not only on the set, but, like, the mindset of being in, like, in that character at that moment in time? Uh, this is really, like, the first time that I'd, I'd played a character that was, like, uh, very stoic and, and uh, like, very uh, brooding, so to speak. Uh, so, like, I don't know. For me, I I looked at good characters that were like the quote unquote hero or anti hero that wasn't hyper emotional. So like if you take a look at films like uh, Ravenous, Guy Pearce and Ravenous, or um, the main character in the movie Blue Ruin was another really good one that I kind of like took a lot from where they're determined, but they're not hyper emotional. And I, I kind of like take that as um, like with this character breaking down, why are they this way? And you like, you think of like the trauma that potentially, uh, the main character Cole has committed and seen, and you start thinking about how someone might react to that, where they might be just, they bottle it inside into this character. So it's just all about really breaking down the character and, um, and, and like really trying to think of like how to have gravitas in the role, so to speak. Yeah. And being in the project, like just this alone, did it motivate you to like want to keep going and doing more horror projects in the future as well? Oh, yeah, totally. Like I, um, I, I guess I can announce it now. There's a, a Lowell Dean film named uh, Dark Match that is expected to be released either this year or early next. It has Chris Jericho, Stephen Ogg, um, Jonathan Cherry. Uh, and then it also has like some other wrestlers in it i got into it and mo jabari um harlan abbott all these other really top-notch like good wrestlers plus me are are in it and uh you know like i had i i didn't get a role i for pro wrestling mine was somehow ended up being a principal role where i'm speaking and acting and that kind of thing so it's kind of crazy where like this snowballed into me trying out for auditioning for a, a feature length union movie and getting a part and then um you know like i'm continuing to audition i have an actor membership like uh this started something that i never expected it to go but i'm i'm very thankful for uh jesse and for mitch oliver for letting me be a part of this because it's opened up so many other doors yeah and i also wanted to like think about like from like your aspect going from a fan to being on set now how is that so different from like watching it let's say on your couch for example to like being there and being in that moment of like kind of you're in their world in a sense it's like how was that different for you too um i think it's uh that's a, that's a good question it's like it's so much larger than life seeing all the cogs in the wheel so to speak like mm -hmm. everyone i think everyone forgets how many people it takes to make a movie if you take a look at like the the, the thank yous and the credits at the end of of druid's hand it's 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 a lot and it's a lot of people came together and it's no different when you go to like a feature length film and you see how many people are important pieces without them nothing would happen and i think it was just like it was surprising seeing how important every person is mm -hmm. that's fantastic um just uh to touch on the the new film that you said you filmed there too uh in comparison to working on the druid's hand which uh which set uh what was the difference of the, the two sets and was it a little intimidating work with some people that maybe you had uh, seen growing up or that you they, you know like you mentioned chris jericho i mean that's got to be quite an intimidating figure to be working alongside of him. Yeah, you know, like, well, the difference is, is um, I think due to, like, the, the length of time, it was eight, 16, 17, 18 hour days over four or five days for the Druid's Hand. I was there for five, six days for the other film. The tightness that we had in Druid's Hand was, like, unmatched. It was just we were all together. We all know that we're coming out of uh, doing this out of a passion project, so to speak. And, 
we had to bring our A game and, and show what we could do. And uh, the other film is just like everyone kind of like it, the tightness wasn't quite there. But then you look over and there's Trevor from Grand Theft Auto V. And, you know, I'm getting my makeup done beside uh, Chris Jericho and we're talking about people speaking Carney. You know, um, so it's, it, it, it's just like it's a very cool experience hanging out with like Jonathan Cherry. The, I, I know him specifically as the goalie from Goon. Yeah. And and I'm I'm looking at him thinking, um, don't touch my Percocets. And he's <laughs> looking at me because he's a huge UFC fan. And I kind of like no sold him a little bit to kind of like stroke my ego a little bit. Like, yeah, I guess I'm kind of cool. I'm not cool. I admit this all the whole time. I'm not a cool person. But like it made me feel a little bit better about myself. No selling, you know, someone who's actually been in movies I like and love. For sure. Ashton. Um, yeah, another thing, like, for you being in the Druid's hand, like, what was the hardest part of, like, that process for you, you know, since it's the first time you do something like this? Um, I think bringing out, like, emotion every time. And it's like, I, I take that that uh, that quote from Simpsons when they're, they're filming Radioactive Man and Millhouse's uh, Fallout Boy. And it's like, and we have just have to do it five more times, then again and again, <laughs> and again and again and again. And again, and it's just like, that's how it is. That's the big thing is just being able to give your all every time and not like cut corners. That was kind of tough, um, especially like with uh, the burning scene at the end, because like we only had so much time to be able to get that perfect light at that dusk moment. Uh, the other really hard part was in the in the roof scenes where I'm crawling on top of the roof. It was a plus mm -hmm. 40 day at Celsius. Mm -hmm. And um, that vest I wear, it's a winter vest. I know it looks really <laughs> snappy and awesome, but it's a winter vest. And it was quite hot. And those days, like that day that we filmed that was, it was, it was tough. But, you know, it's, it's what do you sign up for? You know, you just got to give it your all, make it look good, all that good stuff. Well, you did make it look good. That's for damn yeah. sure. Uh, <laughs> compliments to you and the work that you did on this film. Um, it's all the best. I, I, yeah, I'm going to uh, revert to you if you have any more questions for Mitch. Uh, the last one that I have is like, was there like for you in this process of, you know, from the filming to uh, now the release, what was something that you learned through this whole process from like the beginning to the end of it? I, I think um, the big thing I learned was how the film festival circuit works. You know, like we did this over two years ago almost, we're about two years ago. And realizing that like the editing obviously takes a lot of time and all that stuff but then the amount of festivals we went through and then the agreements that we had to do we had to fulfill these these film festival agreements before we could even think about releasing it and uh you know like just the the minutia of that was just so much more than why like we're done go on the internet make people like it and then find us find someone to let us make a feature length, you know, that's what I thought. And it was definitely not the case. It was, you know, we got to show it at these film festivals, but, and I'm thankful we did. We're, we're an award winning uh, short film, you know, because of it, but just like understanding all the little extra stuff that goes into it was a lot, not what I was expecting. Fantastic. Uh, did you, how many awards did the film end up picking up? And do you, off the top of your head, do you know which, uh, which ones or a couple of them you can name? Sorry, can you can you restate that? For sure, yeah. Um, so with saying that uh, the, being an award-winning film, uh, do you know approximately oh. how many awards the film picked up? And can you name a couple that uh, off the top of your head? Uh, I think we won four or five. We won won Best Canadian Short in Requiem Film Festival. That's the one I kind of know is that we won it in Montreal, where they they show that. You know, we beat out French films in Montreal. When I wrestled competitively, if you went against. You know, we went against Quebec judges. We'd always lose. Um, so to be able to win that was a big one for me. Um, uh, Portland, horror, we won the Portland Horror Short, I think. We won that award at the Portland Horror Film Festival, which is a big, huge venue. Just being shown at Screamfest where, you know, in the in the Chinese theater down there was is absolutely mind-boggling to me. Like, that's that's where they've show, they showed Star Wars. You know what I mean? Like, yep. <laughs> It, it's nuts to me. We won uh, a Calgary Underground Film Award, I, I believe, as well. And then a couple of Saskatchewan Awards. So I think four or five awards. 
I don't have them offhand. Uh, I didn't get to go to all the screenings. Uh, unfortunately, Mitch Oliver did because he's a champ, and he even went down to the Screen Fest viewing, which was, was awesome. For me, the biggest, uh, the biggest, the biggest thing was being in Broadway theater in Saskatoon, in my hometown, in a sold-out theater filled with people that you know and people that you don't know that came out to watch. That's the biggest award to me was we got to show our film at um, at in in the Broadway theater in Saskatoon. That was a big deal to me because it's a big theater and like I'd gone there to watch movies and cartoons and all that other stuff and and just to to have it there that that for me is my biggest award and i know that sounds cheesy or whatever but that's the one i'll remember the most uh, being from that to that city as well too i totally get it and i was i was stunned because you know here i was thinking of the amount of films i've been to there that get you know half to three quarters full at most I'm like okay i can go get a ticket and i waited that extra one extra day or it took them no time at all that theater was sold out I couldn't get a ticket to save my life, but you know, it's huge. It's fantastic for the film, for everybody involved and for the province as well too, to be able to have something so successful come out of here. I, we've had a lot of success come out of here, but it's great that it's being seen on an international platform and just wishing you all the best. I hope that uh, not only your movie career continues to go well, Mitch, but also your wrestling yeah. career as well. Uh, before we let you go, though, uh, I've got your ticker up on the screen with all your socials. But if you want to let people know where they can reach out to you and what you have coming up, uh, take the time to plug your stuff here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mitch Clark MMA on Twitter and on Instagram and uh, Facebook, if anyone actually still uses Facebook. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I wrestling routinely for Real Canadian Wrestling, top talent. I have a big show tomorrow is i don't know if I'll, this will be up or if anyone's planning on checking out i'm in a five-way ladder match which is going to be we'll go with awesome i guess i know it's going to be painful ladder matches are always um violent so I, i'm looking forward it's been a while since i've done one uh love pro wrestling as well as well doing ch- shots for uh bw and hopefully you'll see me in a pbw ring again soon um and that yeah, uh, Tales from the Undercard uh, is our pretty much weekly show that we do. The Rads, that's the facts that I'm part of, where uh, Giant Children, there's some fun ones in there. Uh, and yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm thankful for the support of everyone that I that gives me support. And this is, I, I thought I was done doing cool stuff when I was done <laughs> fighting professionally, um, but apparently. I still got some cool stuff ahead of me. It looks like, you know, between pro wrestling and, and uh, hopefully some more acting gigs, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking forward to the future and what it holds. That's fantastic. And, uh, you know, you mentioned Prairie pro wrestling, miss the hell out of you, brother. I do hope to see you back in a Prairie pro wrestling ring here soon. Uh, it's not quite been the same without you, but uh, we want to thank you very much for joining us here on Killer Cuts. It's been fantastic having you here, and uh, hopefully we can do this again uh, around the time that your uh, next film drops. May I ask a quick question to both you? Definitely of you definitely can. <laughs> uh, top three favorite horror films for each of you. Ooh, oh, that gosh. is a really good question. <laughs> uh, Astrid, do you want to begin? Oh, goodness. Can I cheat and do all three screen movies? <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can choose whatever you want. Uh, it's your choices. Okay, so I do definitely scream the first one, the original one. Um, I think another one that I really always enjoy is um, House of Wax, no matter what. Um and I will say, since we're since we're talking about it soon, I'll say Red Eye because I forget about Red Eye sometimes too. It's a good little thriller. Uh, for me, on the other hand, it's going to be House of a Thousand Corpses, The oh. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and A Nightmare on Elm Street. Solid picks, solid picks. I, I guess I can. I guess I got to go <laughs> since I asked the question. I'm gonna go with uh, Alien, Ridley Scott's Alien, 1979, nice. uh, and then. Uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, Beauty. and then I usually flip flop on on number three, but I'll go with uh, Jaws. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I think it's I do think it fits into the horror franchise. Mm-hmm. I'm not very the horror genre, and I think it's just so pivotal. And I think all of us watched it way before we should have. 
uh, <laughs> and it's all left a horrible mark on all of us for the rest of our lives. That's that's perfectly okay. That's why we're all fans of horror and why we love it so much. I'm glad you asked that question, Mitch, and very glad that you joined us here today. Looking forward to having you back in the uh, in the near future and seeing you again very soon, my friend. Take care. We'll talk to you Sounds soon. Good. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you. You're welcome. And as we wrap up here, Astrid, I'm going to throw your ticker up on the screen and let the people know where they can find you and what you got coming up. Yeah, uh, you can find me mostly on my Twitter, Astrid Pizarro, and my Instagram is Astrid Pizarro 20 um, I have a lighter schedule now, I would say. <laughs> Bittersweet, but yes. Uh, you can find me on Tuesdays doing Taking Over with Ed, talking all about NXT and every other uh, Friday, uh, usually at 6 p.m. Eastern. You can find me with my tag team partner, Mel Ball, doing Ladies Wrestling Showcase. And aside from that, you can find my written NXT review on Women's Wrestling Talk. Um, hopefully, I reached out to somebody today. Hopefully, in sometime this month, I'll release another episode of Ashford Ask. So uh, that's another thing I got going on. Um, and I guess I haven't really said it out here yet, but uh, I do have a panel for women of color in the Florida Supercon at the end of the month. So at June 30th in Miami. So really excited to do my first panel. Um, excited, but also nervous. So yeah, if you're in Miami by around that time, if you want to come hang out and come see us, um, we have, you know, four women panel talking about us in, in the wrestling community. So really excited for, for that as well. Glad you're getting that opportunity and big congratulations to you and all the hard work you've been putting in that's uh, getting you seen and getting you heard of and getting you on these panels. Uh, as for me, of course, you can find me here on OLE all the time, but you can also reach out to me at the below there. Uh, that's where you'll find me. Other than that, of course, you know me. I'm on Thursday nights with my my partner in crime, Papa Smokes, uh, my Brunch Buster brother on Sundays, Chris Parrish. Uh, you see me gaming throughout the week. And, of course, Killer Cuts. We're going to keep keep these things rolling. we got a lot of plans for Killer Cuts yeah. coming the rest of the year. There's some cool movies coming out, too. I know we're going to be hitting up things like Insidious. we got Saw coming out this year. All sorts of goodies for you guys. So we're glad that you're tuning in. Oh, Hope you're loving the show. And if you have seen The Druid's Hand, or a, even if you haven't, let us know your thoughts, questions, anything in the comment section below. We're very responsive to those things, and we want to hear from you. In the meantime and in between time, check out RogueEnergy.com and use that promo code OLEPODS for 10% off your order. And follow us on all the socials here for our local establishment, as well as follows on on uh, sorry, follows on Twitch and subscribes on YouTube. But if you want to subscribe on on the Twitch side, maybe we don't mind that either. That's a, that's very, very welcome. So hey, you get a nice email for, of me. <laughs> yeah. We thank you for all the love and support that you show us here on this show and everything OLE. 